Hi, I'm GM Matthew Sadler, and welcome to this review of the first eight games of the World Chess Championship between Fabiano Caruana and Magnus Carlsen. And it's a review with a difference, because I'm analyzing the games together with AlphaZero, DeepMind's general purpose artificial intelligence system. And this uh, video presents AlphaZero's unique take on these great games. So now what I'd also like to do, I'd like to move on to some of the other games, which were maybe a little bit uh, uh, less exciting at times, but also in a match context, very, very intriguing. And these are the Queen's Gambit Decline games. So let's start off with game, game two, I think. Um, feels so long ago now. Um, I don't think I've ever lived a, a, a world championship as intensely as I have uh, this one, to be honest, uh, sitting and watching it with Alpha Zero. So, um, yeah, it really feels like months ago, game two. So Magnus uh, played um, uh, the uh, Queen's Gambit declined. Um, Fabiano played. This is one of Alpha Zero's uh, favorite openings as well, Bishop E7. Um, and Bishop, e4, Bishop F4 is also uh, Alpha Zero's uh, preferred choice against the uh, Queen's Gambit declined. So I find that very, very interesting because um, uh, although Bishop F4 is the most popular move nowadays, uh, Bishop G5 was the, uh, the classical way to play in the old days. I do have to say that um, if you look at uh, Alpha Zero's opening choices, you see that uh, it's really matching pretty well uh, the um, uh, you know the current best practice at the uh, at the top of the chess world at the moment. So uh, Fabiano went for the old main line uh, with c5, bishop takes c5, and um, after probably the most popular move for White, rook d1, Fabiano rediscovered um, a very unusual move that. Uh, hasn't been played very much at all, rook d8. Um, now in this position, um, alpha zero, along with the rest of the world, uh, to be completely fair, uh, recommended the move knight d2, um, which is always thought to be uh, the move that, um, that uh, uh, should um, give white a, a clear advantage. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure whether this uh, variation is going to occur again in the game, it, uh, in the match. It, it might well do. So I'm not going to give too much analysis of Alpha Zero at this stage. I'll just say that Alpha Zero assesses the, um, the resulting mix of positions that you can get between about 65% and 70% expected score for white. So, you know, nice for white, but still within the, the ball, a good ballpark for, uh, for black. So it'll be interesting to see whether Magnus tries to, uh, to take this opening on. Um, in the game, Magnus played um, the quieter bishop e2. I think this has been Magnus's approach in general when um, facing some obviously very good preparation from Fabiano. Um, try and find a, a slightly quieter line and uh, just bring it to the game where, where um, um, you just have to, to play a little bit. Um, and I think the defining feature of Fabiano's play has been that he's been fantastically prepared for everything. I mean, just like Magnus in that game in the um, Sicilian Rossolimo, um, Fabiano's just had these very concrete forcing lines, narrowing um, uh, the position into a position that he absolutely wants to play. And this makes it very difficult for White to get an edge. And uh, here, Alpha Zero was cheering all the way for Fabiano. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, in a way, you know, in a way, you know, Fabiano has prepared this, has found this idea. And so if Alpha Zero finds it as well, it's, um, it's you know, maybe not, not so impressive. You know, uh, other people have found it as well. It's just that you know, Alpha Zero finds it in one millisecond, which you know, <laughs> we use that from engines, but it's still, it's still pretty good. You know. This move knight e7 was, um, was what Alpha Zero wanted. Um, and it really uh, appreciated uh, Fabiano's play an awful lot here. Um, Magnus um, was you know, really trying to find ways to inject some life into the game. Um, after knight e5, Fabiano played bishop d6. Um, it w um, Alpha Zero actually thought that um, um, you could get away with, uh, with f6, uh, knight g6, and e5 in this position, which is a little bit more um, aggressive. Um, I have to say, I was a little bit worried about it. Um, I mean, from the human pers perspective, you see a knight on g6, you see those weak light squares. Um, I might be a little bit worried about it, but um, um, looking at the variations, it all seemed to, uh, to hang together pretty well. Um, the reason alpha zero um, liked bishop d6 a little bit less was actually due to this move, knight takes f7, um, which uh, it felt led to a, to a very clear draw. Um, there's been a huge amount of analysis on there. I mean, I th Supico did a, a fantastic uh, bit of analysis for that on, on the Chess24 recap. So I'm not going to go into that in, in too much detail. 
um, I can just give you alpha zero's main line for uh, white, which was uh, um, like this with a, a draw by repetition uh, in the end uh, a few moves later. Um, in the game, uh, Alpha Zero thought that, well, black had any of the chances that were going, um, but um, uh, it thought here that bishop d7, uh, bishop b7, rook b8, uh, very typical for Alpha Zero. I mean, uh, it will simply give up pawns in order to activate its pieces. Um, it thought that this was a nice uh, chance for black with a, with a small edge, um, but I mean, I'm, I think that uh, Magnus would have, uh, would have defended this with, uh, without any problems, and the rest of the game was quite, uh, quite even. So the second uh, Queen's Gambit decline game was, um, again, very, very interesting, the same variation. I mean, uh, in a way, you, you can complain about, uh, oh, they're always playing the same openings, but I do love these, uh, these clashes, really, where both players are really trying to prove that they understand the position the best and they, they know the most about it. I think this, this, this is a very nice clash of styles. And it's really something that, um, I think, you know, in a tournament, if you've got all the different players playing the same opening, uh, you might get rather bored, but in a match, there's all the subtext about um, who knows most, who's remembered most, who's done the uh, best work, whose seconds have killed themselves, you know, working and working through the night in order to find something. Um, so after a3, queen a5, Magnus played this move uh, knight d2. And it's a very interesting um, uh, thing because um, uh, I think the main move in alpha zero's uh, preference was the move bishop b4 in this position. And this had been played both by uh, Simon Anktestein, who's uh, Carlson's, uh, Magnus Carlsen's former trainer, and also uh, Rustam Kazimjanov, uh, who's Karana's, uh, uh, one of Karana's main seconds, had played this as black um, uh, quite a while back. So quite a, a nice little uh, subtext to that. This was Alpha Zero's main uh, move. And it thought that um, after these further moves, now queen d8, not queen a4, as, uh, um, as often played, um, it thought that in this position, white had a slight little edge, 56% expected score, but it wasn't too much for, um, uh, for white. But I can imagine that this is quite a nice, a nice unbalanced position to play for white, even if you don't have that much of an advantage. You've got the two bishops, some different asymmetrical pawn weaknesses. Interesting to play. Um, what um, uh, Fabiano did, again, shows the, the depth of the preparation. He played uh, queen d8. Um, and actually, the reason that, uh, that Alpha Zero um, thought that that wasn't the best move was it thought that White could play knight f3 again, and after queen a5, that White could play a better alternative on, uh, on the 12th move, like rook d1. Um, also notice that uh, Anish Giri, who's um, famous for, um, uh, for making a few draws in his uh, chess career, super strong player, of course, uh, he also recommended uh, knight f3 uh, repeating the position. Um, after queen d8, Magnus, well, you know, always trying to make something of the position, he put the knight on a different square, knight b3, and then this was Fabiano's concept, to put the bishop on b6. And actually, um, um, the position, it, it's getting difficult for white already to make some, something really interesting out of it, because a simple plan for black is to take the pawn on c4 and then neutralize the bishops with bishop c7. Um, uh, the game carried on and, and got pretty even pretty quickly. So I was spending some time with, uh, with Alpha Zero around this point, trying to make interesting things work. I and mean, that's one of the wonderful privileges of, uh, of being here, you know, and just uh, having this wonderful, uh, this wonderful uh, machine at, uh, at your disposal. And I was looking at, uh, at the move uh, Castles, of course, um, you know, trying to, um, trying to uh, well, exploit this, uh, this pin and maybe, uh, I don't know, head for, for G4 to G5 or a move like Bishop G5. Um, Alpha Zero was looking, you know, just this simple plan, bishop d7, uh, followed by rook c8. And um, what we were looking at at move 12, oh, it was looking at some pretty interesting uh, hairy lines with um, um, stuff like h6, bishop h4, and knight a5, or even something like d takes c4, uh, knight d2, um, this very nice idea, not taking the pawn, but coming around with knight e4. Uh, and then knight e5, knight d e4, now, all, uh, all pretty sharp stuff. Um, I mean, Alpha Zero didn't think that it was um, you know, going to be much better for white at all, but it did look you know, like a, a very interesting line, but worth, uh, worth uh, looking at in any case. Um, I think in the game, uh, things were pretty, uh, pretty sedate, really, um, certainly after, after these further moves. Um, I mean, 
I'm saying pretty sedate. I mean, uh, I would never fancy trying to make a draw in this sort of equal position against uh, against Magnus, but you know, Fabiano manages it with uh, you know with consummate ease. You know, very very impressive. So I mean, I mean, I think we're um, we're still waiting for these you know Queen's Gambit decline games to really take off. Um, but um, uh, some very, very, very good preparation from, uh, from, from Fabiano in, uh, in both cases. I mean, really revitalizing this line and showing some, some excellent ideas.